We are going to continue our video series on time series data visualization, analysis, and forecasting. In the last two parts of this video series, I talked about uh, visualization. I showed you how to upload your data frame and how to visualize it. And in this video, I'm going to talk about data analysis. Um, if you want to know what data set I'm using, uh, watch part one of this video and if you want to access that data set it is located in the description section of this video as well I am going to run all the cells over here and start talking about data analysis in this video when I'm talking about data analysis I'm talking about different measures that allows me to learn more about my data so this is the data that I'm using it has multiple columns soil temperature, average air temperature, humidity, so on and so forth. I want to learn basic statistics about this data frame that I have. In other words, I want to learn about its minimum, maximum, and other statistics of this data. Okay, so let me actually go all the way down. This is what we worked on in part two, different visualization techniques. Today, I'm going to talk about data analysis. So again, when I'm talking about statistics, basic statistics, I'm talking about minimum value, maximum value, median, mean, um, 25 per percentile, and 75 uh, percentile, or first quartile and um, third quartile, okay, Q1 and Q3. So, very simple method of doing this, and before doing this, let's actually show our data frame. I'm going to show the top three rows of my data frame just to show you how it looks like. Right now, I have my date time. As my index and these are the three uh, columns that I added in part two of this video okay so I want to learn about every single um, column in this data frame what I, what I should do let me add another code piece over here it's a very simple um, pandas method called describe so describing will give you the ability to summarize the data how many data you have in your time series, the mean or the average of the data for each column, uh, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, and we have the first quartile, the 50 or the median, and the uh, third quartile over here as well. You can see that automatically it has removed uh, these last three ones over here that I already added. So this is good. This gives me a lot of information, right? That I can use and understand my data. But another way of doing this that gives you a lot more information is by installing another a package called Pandas Profiling. So Pandas Profiling, the primary goal is to give you a lot more data analysis tool than what describes gives you. And it also gives you a lot of um, essentially uh, ways to visualize your data okay so the first step in order to do that we need to install this package this package is not installed by default so you need to um, install that package so when i want to install it using pip i'm going to use the exclamation mark and then have pip install pandas profiling the version that i'm interested in is 2.7.1 this is the version that is compatible with other packages that i'm using and i'm going to run this and show you what happens so it's going to go ahead and install this package for me sometimes when you are installing the package at the end of it you get um, an error it's not actually an error it tells you that you need to restart what you are doing to be able to use that package sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't right now it didn't do it so if it does it it will give you a button over here you will restart and run your code again and you can essentially make this line a uh, comment after that okay so right now the package is installed for me and it didn't give me that button over here that says restart so i'm good to go so the next thing that i want to do i am going to import that package over here i'm going to import it as a profile report so pandas underscore profiling import um, profile report. All right, now I'm going to call profile report over here and create a report for my data frame. But before doing that, I'm going to clean the data frame a little bit. What do I mean by that? My data frame right now has 
three columns that I don't need in my summary of the report, right? This YM year and month, I don't need that. So I'm going to drop those columns from the data frame. I'm going to call it DFC, uh, cleaned data frame, and drop those columns uh, from the data frame, right? Okay, so this is the first step that I will do. And the next step is create a report. And this report is going to call profile report and give to this profile report my data frame, which is DFC. And then at the end of it, I'm going to print report to see how is my report. So I'm going to run this code. You'll see that it will take some time. For my computer, it will take about like 30 minutes. So I'm going to let it go. And once it's ready, I will show you the report. All right, as you can see, the data frame is ready. Um, so it has given you a lot of information. Overview gives you an overview of the data that you have. Uh, reproduction, it gives you essentially what you, have, what you have run to create this. And then there will be some warning as well, which is these warnings are my favorite. Take a look at it. It tells me that uh, soil temperature at 50 centimeter is highly correlated with soil temperature at 10 centimeter and one other field and this other field is 100 centimeters so this is expected right because so soil temperature we already know that they are correlated but if you for some reason forget this will give you a lot of good information so this is the high correlation um warning the other one tells you again the 10 centimeter soil temperature is correlated with 50 and 100 and average air temperature which is again a great thing to see and then average air temperature is correlated with 10 centimeter soil temperature time is uniformly distributed time has unique values and snow depth has so many zeros also this is expected because in june and july and august and some other months there will be zero snow depth on the ground but this is a great information for me okay so after this overview part which is really important you will see an overview of each variable including time which was my index right so the next one is soil temperature at 10 centimeter again you will see the high correlation value over here it will count the data for you it will tell you if you have missing data it will tell you the minimum maximum zero so on and so forth and it gives you actually the distribution of the data as well really really good information so you can actually add more detail to see more details details about it statistics uh, the quartiles are over here um, maximum minimum ranges over here histogram will give you a histogram of, of frequency distribution of your data what else common values if your data set has common values it will tell you and extreme values it will tell you the extreme values as well because the data that I'm using is related to a very cold place in the United States you can see that I have some extreme temperature values over over here and some extreme high temperatures as well okay so this is again a great great val the great actually um detail for you so it gives you this kind of detail for every single variable that you have and in addition to that it tells you the interactions of your variables right now for example i'm going to find the interactions between um 10 centimeter soil temperature and 50 centimeter soil temperature uh, we know that there should be a high correlation between 10 centimeter and 50 centimeter right so it gives you a graph that shows you the correlation between 10 centimeter and 50 centimeter for some reason this one is not let me change it to see if it works maybe there is some delay right now but for some reason this is 10 centimeter and 10 centimeter it doesn't work for me let's see I don't know for me it doesn't work let me know if it works for you or no because both my y-axis and x-axis right now are 10 centimeter all right and the correlation there are different statistics that you can create this heat map and figure out the correlation between 
different variables. For example, we know that 10 centimeter salt temperature should have a high correlation with 50 centimeter salt temperature, right? So if we go up over here and find 50 centimeter, you will see that this is dark blue, which means there's a high positive correlation between 10 centimeter and 50 centimeter soil temperatures. This is great, and you can do that for other tests as well, as you can see, to find the correlation. There will be more information about each test when you toggle it over here. This is absolutely great. Missing value, it will give you a matrix value of missing value. Right now, I don't have any missing value, so it should be um, easier. And for a sample, it give, give you the first row of the data and the last row of the data as well. Amazing capabilities for Pandas profiling um, library that you can use. Okay, so now you're going to say, how are we going to save this data? Uh, the good news is that you can save this data into your Google Colab, um, Google Colab um, files. So let me comment this out so it doesn't print it. And then in this over here, I'm going to say report and use this method on it. It's called to file to file and then write a name for your report. Data frame report is the name that I chose. So, okay, I'm going to run this again and you will see that it's going to summarize the data set and then save it for me. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds. Once it's done, I am going to show you how it looks like. All right, it's done. It took 22 seconds to be done. Now, if I click on this folder over here, you will see that right over here under content, I have data frame report. So I can download this, download this and open it. It's an HTML file, so it will be by default open by your browser, your default browser, and you can see the same report that I showed you in Google Colab environment in your browser as well. Okay, so this video we talked about data analysis. We are going to continue talking about data analysis and eventually move to uh, time series forecasting in Python and using Google Colab. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel and tune in for more videos on this topic.